लेक्चर विल बी अबाउट फोर्थ कंपोनेंट ऑफ एच पी एल सी इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन दैट इज कॉलम एंड स्टेशनरी फेज यूज इन एच पी एल सी एच पी एल सी कॉलम इन क्रोमेटोग्राफी एच पी एल सी कॉलम प्ले ए की रोल इन सेपरेटिंग कंपोनेंट फ्रॉम द सोल्यूशन एच पी एल सी कॉलम इज हार्डवेयर दैट एट एज ए स्टेशनरी फेज इन एच पी एल सी सिस्टम इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ ट्यूब containing chromatographic packing material and close from both ends with fitting to facilitate connection with hplc system so it is a tube either it is made up of plastic glass or steel and it is packed with packing material these packing material at as a stationary phase requirement for good column leak free consume minimum volume no void or dead volume chemically inert to mobile phase and sample and it can withstand high pressure material used for hplc column are stainless steel peak polyether ether ketones and glass first one is stainless steel as we are using the solvents at high pressure in hplc so the column should be made from such a material that can withstand high pressure and stainless steel is the most commonly used column material in hplc why it is used because it has advantage that it can withstand the higher pressure so the solvent with high pressure can pass through stainless steel column easily as compared to glass and plastic column second is peak polyether ether ketone it is an engineered plastic and the material is made up of semi crystalline thermoplastic it has extraordinary property of mechanical and chemical resistance with high temperature it can be operated at a temperature of 250 degree c or 482 fahrenheit also it is a highly resistant material to attack by organic and aqueous environments peak material has high chemical or mechanical resistance also it can work at high temperature stainless steel has mechanical strength and it can withstand high pressure so in order to combine the material pro peak material property and the strength of the stainless steel these both are used as single column so in order to increase the strength the stainless steel of the hplc column are lined with peak material to get the advantage of peak pro material property and strength of the stainless steel so these are used combined in a single column third is glass that is less popular and less pressure tolerant however glass column are used when inert surfaces are the most important characteristic that is required for special chemical or biological applications column used in hplc that is guard column and main column or analytical column first one is guard column that is also known as protective column now it is introduced before the main column here it is the guard column and it is the main column main hplc column it is introduced before the main column in order to increase the lifetime of this main column if the particulate material or any contamination that are present in the mobile phase and it will move towards the hplc column it will damage the hplc packing material because it will react irreversibly with the packing material or it will block the pack, uh, packing material of the main hplc column now in order to increase the lifetime of this main hplc column guard column is introduced it will trap the any contamination or any particulate material that are coming from the mobile phase so it will protect the main column 
a god column is introduced before the main column to increase the life of main column by removing particulate matter and contaminants from solvents the composition of god column packing material is similar to that of the main column so the packing material is same in both the column but the difference is the packing the size of the packing material in the god column is larger as compared to main hplc column the particle size is usually larger when the guard column has become contaminated it is repacked or discarded and replaced with new one so it is the property of uh, this guard column when it is contaminated it is uh, it can be easily discarded or it can be replaced with a new one or the packing material can be changed so it is the property of guard column and it will protect the main column there is some uh, another filter that are given in the figure that is inline filters two inline filters one inline filter is between the injection port and the pump and the second inline filter is between the guard column and the injection unit so what is the purpose of this inline filter the inline filter removes system contaminants and maintain fluid purity in instrumentation so the inline filter working is similar to the guard column almost it is similar to the guard column but there is some a little bit difference between the inline filter and the guard column the inline filter protect a column from physical contamination while the guard column help protect the column from both the physical contaminants and chemical contaminants so it will remove the dust particle or any particulate material that that will move towards the main column so it is the working of this inline filters it will filter out this contaminants physical contaminants while the guard column will protect the main column by trapping the physical contaminants that is the particulates and also it will uh, trap the chemical contaminants that will react irreversibly with the uh, packing material of the main column so it will uh, trap the physical and chemical contaminants while the inline filter will trap the physical contaminants second is the analytical column or main hplc column the actual separation of the component takes place as these component pass through the main hplc column when the solute along with the mobile phase will pass through this main analytical column here the actual separation of the component will takes place the hplc equipment uses stainless steel or plastic column that are 5 to 30 cm in length and the inner diameter is 1 to 5 mm in recent past the most common hplc column diameter a was 4.6 mm but nowadays 2.1 mm is becoming the most common that is the narrow column narrow column is the more compatible with mass spectrometry which requires less solvent flow the narrow column require less sample and produces less waste instrument that use the 4.6 mm column also operate with 2.1 mm column so it is the property of 2.1 mm narrow column the instrument that are the older instrument and they are operated at 4.6 mm column if we replace it with 2.1 mm column that then it is operated columns narrow than 2.1 mm required specially designed instrument to reduce band broadening outside the column so the column that are narrow than 2.1 mm it will require a special instrumentation while the column that are narrow 2.1 mm it is fitted into the instrument that is for 4.6 mm capillary column that are narrow than 2.1 mm that has as narrow uh, to 25 micrometer can be used
Stationary phase or packing material used in HPLC columns are microporous particles, spherical, pellicular particles and bonded stationary phase. First one is microporous particle. A common support is microporous particle of silica with diameter 5 to 10 micrometer. These particles are totally permeable to solvents. It means the solvents can penetrate to these particles. Having surface area of several hundred square meter per gram. Most silica cannot be used above pH 8 because it dissolves in base. So, silica is most commonly used as a microporous particle. But this silica cannot be used above pH 8 because the silica particle, if, uh, if used above pH 8, it will dissolve in base. So it is a drawback of silica microporous particle. All those silica microporous particle are the most commonly used uh, packing material in HPLC column. It can be divided into irregular microporous particle and regular microporous particle. So there are some properties of regular and irregular microporous particles given. The properties that are given for irregular and the regular properties these are inverse of each other let's see these are less expensive and these are more expensive give poor separation gives better separation produce unsymmetrical peaks produce more symmetrical peaks cannot be packed into stable manner because of their irregular size and these can be packed into a stable manner in the column because of their regular size Second is spherical pellicular particles. So the spherical pellicular particles, it consists of a core that is coated with some material. So it consists of a solid non-porous core. So the core should be non-porous and the coated particles, it should be the porous. And a thin porous outer layer, the outer layer is porous and the core is non-porous that has diameter up to 40 micrometer. Pellicular particles are made from polymers or glass beads. So these are the core particles are made from the polymer or glass beads and it is surrounded by a thin surface of coating and layer of silica, polystyrene, divinyl benzene, synthetic resin, alumina and other types of ion exchange resins. So these are the porous and the inner core is non-porous. Only thin coat of pellicular particles are permeable to solvents. Just like in um, silica um, microporous particle, the whole particle is porous, so it is permeable to solvents. While in case of spherical pellicular particles, this is the outer surface or the outer layer is porous. So only the thin porous uh, layer that is present outside the core, it is permeable to the solvent. It has excellent packing characteristics and lower resistance to solvent flow. Third type is bonded stationary phase. It is most commonly used in liquid-liquid partition chromatography in which the bonded stationary phase is covalently or chemically attached with the silica surface. So silica surface and the bonded stationary phase is attached on it through a covalent bond. So the silica surface and it is the bonded stationary phase. So the chloride and H are replaced and it will remove in the form of HCl. Now the silicon will form bond with the silica surface through this bridging oxygen and the bonded stationary phase is attached with the silica surface. Stationary phase used in reverse phase and normal phase HPLC. In reverse phase HPLC, a non-polar organic substituents used as a stationary phase and the polar mobile phase are used. So the stationary phase, non-polar stationary phase include octadecyl, octyl and phenyl. While in case of normal phase HPLC, uh, 
a polar organic phase used as a stationary phase and the less polar or the non polar mobile phase are used so the polar organic stationary phase include amino cyano and diols